Hello, hello. Welcome to Inklings with Irina, the weekly energy show connecting you to your intuitive guidance system. And today I'm jumping on to talk about what to do when the mind is racing and you just can't seem to get any peace. This has come up a lot for my clients over the last couple weeks where they've had a lot of ideas churning through their head, a lot of things coming up and they just want to be able to either go to sleep or if they wake up be able to get back to sleep. The second thing that's happening is there are projects that need to be worked on. They need that full attention and focus to get through the day to check off the projects and to continue to move forward. If we haven't met yet my name is Irene. Irina Miller. I can't even say my name today and I'm an intuitive energy guide and I really see myself as an energy alchemist. I've been working with women for over 20 years now in helping them really connect to their gut instinct, uh, help them to shift the energy, whether it's a mood that settles on them and they just don't know where it's come from, whether it's a feeling of getting stuck and wanting to be able to move forward like that plateau spot or simply just looking for the next adventure. You know, they're a bit confused on which direction to take and I do this all through a variety of sacred practices. So let's jump in and let me share some of these sacred practices with you today. Hello Murphy. So yeah, as you jump on, definitely give me a little hello let me know where you're watching from because I always like to know who's tuning in so when it comes to a racing mind it makes sense there's a lot going on around us and there are three specific things that I've been sharing with my clients this week to help them calm the mind so that it can sift through what's really important what they really need to pay attention to that urgency versus like a false urgency um, something that's not so important and I always go back to Mark Twain's quote or think of it often and I never quite say it right so please forgive me I'll have to write it down and have it in front of me some point but he said something along the lines of you know I've had some pretty terrible things happen to me in life some of which actually came true <laughs> And I love that because how often does a mind race with worries or frustrations and we think of, you know, terrible outcomes, but they don't come true. So what can we do? I want to share with you what I'm calling my CMC method. And I like to come up with these fun little acronyms because it's a way to help us program our subconscious because when everything hits the fan, it's not so much about, um, it's kind of, um, there's another quote that I love that Navy SEALs say often that comes from Archelaus and it goes along the lines of, you know, when stress hits the fan, we don't rise to the occasion, we sink to the level of our training. So uh, every Wednesday as I come on and I do these inklings, I'm very grateful for you showing up because that's what you're doing here is you're doing your training, you're doing your practice, and that's going to support you when the stress hits the fan. And if we have those sing-songy kind of rhyming methodologies, our subconscious, which takes over in a fight or flight situation often, is going to be able to remember that training more easily. It's kind of like in the old days growing up, um, maybe you've experienced where they were like, if you ever get, you know, catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll. And so the thing is, is if, you know, we're in the stress of the fire, what are we going to remember? Are we going to remember like, oh, okay, something sing-songy brings it back. Super helpful. Hello, Christine. Great to have you. And Jaina, great to have you as well. So that's why I kind of love to come up with these little acronyms or sing-songy methodologies to just help you when everything's hitting the fan, it's easier to remember. So CMC, what that means is I've taken some specific sacred practices and really there are so many that you can go to, but these specifically I've chosen you know, as an energy alchemist. I love to kind of get into my little energy kitchen, so to speak, and go through the sacred practices and say, oh, you know what would help here? This would help and this would help and create a beautiful little recipe just for you to take with you. That's my true joy. So that's what I've done here. So CMC, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give my clients and you ways that you can hello christina good morning i wanted to give you ways that you could easily interact with calming a racing mind whether it's with a specific tool or just the best energy tool possible which is your physical body um, we're very blessed we can do a lot just by our breath the way we shape our body to evoke certain experiences it's really quite powerful so the first c is actually a tool and it's a crystal so 
the idea behind crystals in helping you shift your energy, and in this specific case, we're looking to shift a racing mind. We wanna find that calm and that peace. It's through the process of entrainment. The power isn't in the crystal itself. Um, you don't necessarily need the crystal for a calm mind, but in the spirit of entrainment, what the crystal does is it reminds you of your heart song or your tune. What does a peaceful mind feel like? Now, what do I mean by that? So let me step back a little bit and talk about entrainment and the idea of the grandfather clock in the Swiss shop. So when you have a Swiss clock shop, and I love those, you know, those phrases, like, you know, Swiss trains run on time, and you have this grandfather clock who's there, the weight of his pendulum, what starts to happen is this gravitational effect. As that heavy pendulum weight is swinging back and forth, it is influencing all the other clocks in the clock shop and it's getting them on to the right time, onto the right rhythm and beat. So that's a process of entrainment. Think about it, if you've been around someone with a very big magnetic personality who seems to you know, just take over the room when they walk in, their energy rubs off a little bit because they've got this magnetic weighty energy that kind of pulls everybody by their influence. So with crystals, it's that sort of idea, is that it's setting out a particular vibration or frequency, just like in an orchestra, when you've got that first violin chair that says, you know, okay, this is our note, this is what we're playing in, and then everybody else tunes in. The crystal, the same sort of idea. So do we need the crystals? Well, no, but it's a nice um, ally to have when we can't remember that tune. It's like, just remind me, remind me of who I am, remind me that feeling of peacefulness. I just need to taste it again. So this way we don't become codependent or reliant upon the crystals like, oh my God, I can't go anywhere. I don't have my lucky crystal. It's no, no, no. It's there as a support. We won't always need it. It's just nice to have. So particular crystals that are nice to calm a racing mind. I've got some rocks in my pockets, um, some crystals, selenite. Selenite is great for clearing energy that isn't in your highest and best interest. It can help calm and soothe. And then one of my favorites, lapidolite. So if your mind is really feeling anxious and worried, this is a great one. And I love this because it's shaped as a worry stone and I have paint all over my nails from painting my daughter's bedroom. So please excuse the messy hands, but crystals. So I love to go to those. So that's the first C, a sacred tool, crystal. The second one, the M, we're gonna get into the best energy instrument, I believe, which is your body, are mudras. Now mudras, what is that? So that comes from my tradition of yoga practice where I learned about mudras and many other wonderful things, but we can change the shape of our body to evoke a particular experience or feeling. So think about it, it's body language, right? If you are looking to cheer yourself up, body language experts will tell you that if you're going around rounded all day like this, it's gonna naturally close down the heart and it's going to lower your enthusiasm levels. So if you wanna boost that confidence, if you wanna bring more joy into your life, it's that feeling of standing tall, draw the shoulders back, or even doing a smile. Simply smiling, even when you're not happy, can start to elevate the mood and shift it. So we're taking the shape of our body to shift our energetic experience. And this is what is behind, it's one way to think of it, it's kind of a simplistic view, but I, I love these kind of overarching analogies to help us grasp and understand why does bringing our hands together, which is a mudra in a sacred gesture, how and why does that make a difference? Well, maybe you've noticed just with a simple smile how that can shift a mood. So mudra is the idea is that you shape your body in a particular way so that just like a lightning rod or a TV antenna, you can tune into the energy or the experience or the feeling that the mudra is connected to. And there are mudras, and that's spelled M-U-D-R-A, that are for everything, you know? A lot of people know namaste, or it's Anjali mudra, but people say namaste with this greeting in yoga classes. They know jin mudra for wisdom. And the one that I really wanna share with you to help calm that racing mind so you can focus is hakini mudra. And you just simply bring your fingertips together, like a so. Hmm. And maybe you've seen people doing this, like, hmm, I wonder. It's funny, I just saw a picture of Oprah doing this. 
we do these hand gestures so naturally. Um, it, it's um, in our energetic field and system. We're naturally inclined to it. So if the mind is racing, you can do a mudra. And there's plenty of others to help calm the mind as well. But just in my little energy alchemy kitchen, these are the ones that I specifically, when I was putting this recipe together for you today, I'm bringing to you. So the crystals, lapidolite or selenite, the Hakimi Mudra, wonderful. And that brings us to the final C, which is a container. Now, this particular aspect of a sacred practice is how I like to see, you know what? Every now and then we need to lean on a friend. Hello, Alicia. Hello, Candy. Wonderful to have you. So the container is, I love this one. Number one, let me talk about friends. Yes, there are wonderful friends like you guys here. Thank you for coming and playing energy with me. And there are wonderful friends in high places that we can't see, our angels and guides, but we feel them, we know they're there. Our loved ones on the other side, I know I call them my loved ones all the time, and uh, <laughs> sometimes I yell at them, <laughs> but I always love them, uh, I giggle. But really and truly, we can call on our loved ones. So a practice that I love to do, if I wake up in the middle of the night, and my brain is, or mind is racing, and you know, and that's at three o'clock, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. hour, where it's like, oh no, all the worries hit. They don't bother you so much at 12, you know, in the middle of the day, but they tend to really get you stirred up at 3 a.m. So what can you do? Because sleep is important. If you wake up that next day and you've got that lack of sleep jittery feeling, uh, it starts a bad cycle up right from the get-go. So. If you wake up in the middle of the night, or even if it happens during the day and you just can't focus on that particular worry, what I love to do is I think of it as a container method. Well, <laughs> thanks for all the love, Candy. Um, and this container method, what I mean by that is I'll call on my guardian angel and I'll say, you know what? I have this worry and I really can't do anything about it at 3 a.m. in the morning right now. It's something that I need to solve. I need direction on maybe. Can I hand it over to you for safekeeping? And I just imagine handing over that worry to my guardian angel and they keep it in a nice little golden box. I love golden. Um, I use that a lot, that color a lot in energy practices because it's a color of neutrality. It's a color of peacefulness, of love. Um, it's really a nice color to use, but you could use any color you want. Imagine just handing it over and I go back to sleep with great ease because I know that the you know, the information will come back to me. I might even come to a solution in my sleep, um, or the next day I might have inspiration on how to move forward with whatever worry it was. And if it's not an important one, it disappears. And it's wonderful. So that's what I mean by a container. The other aspect of containers, some people like worry dolls, and they'll, um, they make these for kids too. You could write down the worry and just pop it in the tummy of the worry doll and have that next to you. Some people like little physical containers next to the side of their bed or in their office. Um, they work with stones and jars. So there's lots of different practices. Again, what I wanted to bring to you is a specific recipe that you could do fairly easily um, where you grab a rock, <laughs> maybe it's just one in your yard that helps calm and soothe you. Um, maybe it's just something that reminds you of the earth, a beautiful, flower arrangement from your garden of wild flowers. But find the things that help you and serve you. We can get quite creative with this. So just to recap, the three wonderful action steps that you can take to calm that racing mind, I call it the CMC method, a crystal to help you with entrainment, to remind you of that frequency of calm and peace, to be able to focus with clarity. The M, the mudra, the hand gesture that helps bring your awareness back to the moment to cut through the clear, uh, chaos and clutter. Wanted to combine those words. And then finally, the final C, which is container, where you can lean on a friend. And maybe too, it's just calling a friend up and, uh, and just having a chat. It's always wonderful blessing and gift when we have wonderful friends who listen. And our angels and guides are always there to listen. So thanks for tuning in with me. It is so wonderful, wonderful to have you. If you have a method or a practice that you love for calming a racing mind, definitely um, share it, share it in the comments. Um, I'd love to know. I'm always collecting more practices and creating more practices and um, love to share them with all of you. So thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you wanna continue this journey, if you want more practices, definitely click on the link. Um, I share a lot. Uh, over time. <laughs> all right. Catch y'all on the flip side. Thanks for being here with me. Mwah. Bye guys.